Let us talk uh, liquidity provision to decentralized exchanges. As you might already be aware, decentralized exchanges do not operate on an order book model. The reason for that is that uh, transaction fees as well as block confirmation times would make the posting of uh, uh, bids and asks uneconomical on a blockchain. What they do instead is they utilize um, liquidity pools, which are essentially uh, reserves of tokens that are uh, held in smart contracts and automated market makers to price those tokens against which uh, users uh, trade. This is how they mitigate the issue of maintaining uh, an order book on chains. Now, Anyone can supply liquidity to those liquidity pools and benefit from transaction fees that are paid uh, to the liquidity providers. Let's see how you can do this on Uniswap now. I will now show you how you can supply liquidity to a decentralized exchange uh, using Uniswap as an example. So I, I am on app.uniswap.org and the first thing that I'll need to do, you guessed it right, is connect my wallet and select the network that I want to interact on. I can do this from the top right, click on connect, select my Rabi wallet. And up until now, we've been using the base network uh, for everything. I for just illustrative purposes, I would like to use optimism just to drive home the point that interactions, no matter the layer two, are pretty much uh, the same. Now, uh, Uniswap, in order for you to supply liquidity, requires a pair of cryptocurrencies. There are other exchanges that allow you to uh, provide one-sided uh, liquidity, uh, but Uniswap does not work in that way. Uh, the reason they ask uh, the user to supply a pair is because you are essentially supplying both sides of the liquidity for the user to trade against, from one token uh, to the other. The way you can do this is very simply by clicking on pool. Uh, you are presented with many options here. If you had already a position open, you would be able to see it uh, right in the middle of the screen. Uh, you have a drop down menu with more options. We won't be bothered with that. Um, you can explore the top pools on the network of your choice by clicking this button here. You can see that on Optimism we have many pairs. Uh, they are ranked here by total value locked. Um, you can think of total value locked as um, a metric that measures the size of the pool. You can think of it as assets under management by this liquidity pool. And you can also see other metrics such as the 24 hour volume or the seven day volume. But I won't be bothered with that too much. Let's open a new position by clicking uh, this button here. And I would like to supply a popular liquidity pair as we saw, which is uh, wrapped ether and the OP token. Now, um, the first thing that I will need to select is the uh, fee tier that I would like to charge or the fee that I would like to charge uh, to users that uh, use my liquidity. And I have a few options here, okay? I can choose 001 through 1%. I have four main options. Now, as you can see, 84% of, of users selected the 0.3% option and 8% of users the 0.05% option. Uh, your choice of fee tier depends or should depend on the characteristics of the tokens you are supplying. And it is easier to illustrate with uh, two examples on the uh, extreme ends of the spectrum. So for instance, let's say you are providing two very highly liquid, uh, highly popular stable coins that are available across exchanges. They're both US denominated stable coins, very stable, they do not depeg uh, uh, at all. Uh, the price does not fluctuate. Well, in that instance, people exchanging 
uh, swapping against your pool are going to expect very low fees. Okay. On the other end of the spectrum, suppose you are supplying two exotic tokens, two tokens that are low cap tokens, they could be new, uh, they have overall uh, low liquidity and so on and so forth. In that scenario, people, users would be fine with paying higher fees for the trade. And this is basically the choice Uniswap presents you with. How much do you want to charge? In which you know, segment do you want to participate in? Let's leave this at 0.3%, which is what Uniswap recommends for more, most uh, token pairs. Now, the second choice that you're presented with is the price range in which your liquidity will be concentrated. Um, you can provide liquidity across the entire price spectrum of the two tokens, so from zero uh, to infinite, or you can concentrate a li your liquidity to a specific uh, exchange rate. And as you can see, uh, more, much of the liquidity is concentrated in between minus 50% plus 100%. And you can tweak this to your heart's uh, content. Now, there are two main strategies here. Okay, You can allocate your funds where you expect higher trading activity. So in the price, in the exchange rate, you expect higher, higher trading activity. So the, the price at the moment is here, as you can see, liquidity is supplied around this area. Okay, Few users believe that the exchange rate will trend uh, upwards, so this is why you don't see much liquidity. So this is the first strategy, allocating your liquidity where you, uh, where, uh, you expect prices to move uh, because you will benefit from volume, or you can and you would do this, for instance, by sliding this closer to the current market price. Okay, I can concentrate my liquidity, and as you can see, the numbers above uh, change. Or the second strategy is allocating your liquidity to a range that might have uh, less trading activity. So, for instance, here, right? Uh, okay but you might expect be more relevant uh, in in the future and you will benefit because you will have less competition from other traders if indeed this segment at least initially uh, becomes more relevant but for now let me just f since we're doing this for uh, illustration purposes allocate in a um let's say this range this sounds reasonable to me uh, and then i will need to select the amount of funds that i will uh, allocate um, you need to supply uh, equal amounts of those funds i will need to approve those tokens separately in order to be able to use them and to allocate them uh, in this pool i'll sign those uh, uh, separate uh, approvals Let's go ahead and do this now. After I do this, I will be able to preview the uh, supplying of liquidity and then simply click on add and confirm the transaction in my wallet. Sign, create, confirm. And this is pretty much it. I have added my liquidity to this pool and it will very soon as you can see I appear here uh, on the pool page my position is in range this means that I'm earning fees and I can click on that to further manage my position uh, the cool thing here is that uh, in Uniswap uh, version 3 your uh, positions are represented as NFTs well, which is you know great and Again, as you can see, I have already started collecting some fees uh, from um, you know trades that have been made, and I can choose to collect them as you know either you know uh, the token or as uh, wrapped ETH. 
Nice. Uh, I can remove this liquidity or even increase this liquidity. And this is pretty much how you can supply liquidity on a decentralized exchange. The process will be similar on other exchanges too. I will now show you how you can supply liquidity for loans as well as borrow against your crypto using uh, Aave, this decentralized lending and borrowing platform. I'm here on uh, app.ave.com and the first thing that I will need to do again, you guessed it right, is connect my wallet from the top right, click on browser wallet and my Rabi wallet is connected. Now, uh, this platform, as you can see, as many others, can detect the assets you have. You can see them on the left uh, hand side. Uh, but before I start supplying assets, I'd like to switch the layer that I'm interacting on. Uh, I will not use the base layer due to fees. I will select to uh, the base layer. And of course, uh, I can very easily choose Optimism, we saw the example on uh, Uniswap or any other layer too. So let's go again, it detects uh, the assets I have on uh, all chains. So let's go back to base for a second. So the assets I have is uh, some ETH and some USDC. Now. Uh, the first thing, as I said, that you can do is opt to supply your token uh, to the Aave platform for users who would like to borrow it. And uh, in exchange, you will receive some interest on uh, this asset. You can see the APY on the right hand side of your screen. It is 2% for Ethereum and 5.6% for USDC. Uh, not bad. Now, in case you're wondering who determines this APY, well, it, is, it varies based on factors such as the demand for the assets that you are supplying or the liquidity available for a certain asset. Um, uh, the process for supplying this asset is very simple. Let's, let me go with USDC. I will simply, you might notice that there is also a difference between the APY it says that I will receive here uh, and the uh, asset to borrow. This is the spread that uh, Aave uh, benefits from. So I'll click on supply. Let me supply the maximum amount that I can supply. Oops, I need to switch my network uh, real quick. Very easy as you can see. And now I'm waiting. I'll need to approve USDC for use on Aave by simply signing here. And once this is done, as you will see, this costs not a lot of money. Uh, I can choose to supply the USDC. Now, this fee would be considerably more um, if performed on um, the Ethereum mainnet, and I can add the A token to my wallet. This is a liquidity provision token. This serves as a, uh, this is essentially a receipt that uh, allows me to withdraw uh, my funds. Uh, perfect. This collateral now, this, this, this USDC appears under my supplies. Uh, this is the APY that I'm earning. Well, why is it not 5.61? Well, the spread is what uh, Aave uh, earns. I can, you know, I have this enabled, which means that I can use it as collateral for a loan. I can withdraw this collateral or I can even switch this uh, uh, magically for some other form of collateral if I so choose. Uh, you will see uh, I, I really don't want to do this because uh, my the, the APY that I will earn uh, will drop uh, substantially. But regardless, uh, I could uh, do so if I really wanted to. Let's now see how I can borrow against this collateral. Now, let's see how I can use this USDC collateral to borrow some ETH on Aave on the L2 uh, base layer. 
very simple. I go to the right hand side, I see the assets that I can borrow and very simply click on borrow. Now I will be able to borrow up to a certain amount that does not exceed the value of uh, my collateral. You should be familiar with the concept of over collateralization in the context of decentralized lending and borrowing. This is to ensure that there is a cushion that ensures that the value of my collateral does not fall below uh, the value of the funds that I have borrowed and thus my position does not become under collateralized. Uh, the maximum amount that I can borrow is this which is marginally less it is approximately 80 percent uh, than what i have supplied uh, i can see the liquidation factor here and if this liquidation factor uh, passes number one falls below one then my collateral will be eligible for liquidation what this means is that likely a liquidation bot will come in it will sell my 23 or at that point 20 dollars worth of usdc away and i'll keep the ETH that i have borrowed eating the loss this is to ensure that the value of my collateral does not drop further now let's go with something uh, safer here let's bump up the collateralization factor well i'm not too bothered because my collateral is usdc which is a stable coin which does not fluctuate much but regardless i can uh, go ahead and you know have a collateral factor of uh, 2.73 i'm feeling quite confident that i won't won't get liquidated now i simply click on approve sign and after this is done which shouldn't take long let's see after this is done i can click on borrow ETH. let me bump up the transaction fee that is pretty much it. I have submitted the transaction. I am ready to borrow $7 approximately worth of ETH against my $23 uh, dollars of USDC collateral. All done. These are my borrows. I can see them on the right side. I can switch the asset that I have borrowed or I can repay uh, the borrowed asset to retrieve my collateral and this is how you supply liquidity and uh, how you can borrow against your collateral this is the apy i'm making and this is the health factor of my position with the explainers here for the sake of completeness let me show you how you can repay your loan and withdraw your money uh, very simple click on uh, repay i can you know partially pay off my loan if i so desire uh, but you know very simply uh, click on uh, repay sign everything and that is pretty much it waiting for the transaction to go through all done and then i can withdraw my collateral I will withdraw the maximum amount of collateral and why not let's let's try something fancy let's uh, uh, let's withdraw and switch to some other currency okay let's withdraw and switch well the the uh, image is not updating but the the token did indeed uh, update and you can always you know uh, verify this um, in your wallet of course which is what I'll do um sign and create withdraw and switch see you can do cool things in uh decentralized finance and indeed despite the uh, image of the token here not updating i can uh, verify in my wallet that indeed i will be receiving uh coinbase uh, uh wrapped eth 
that is pretty much it